Hi Trinity College London drummers, hope you're well. Little talk through video for you here for Satin Doll uh, from Trinity Rock and Pop, not Trinity Rock and Pop, Trinity College London Drums Grade 2. This is a really great book. This is actually the old syllabus now, so it finished in 2019. But this book is still incredibly popular. And I really recommend it for everyone at Grade 1, Grade 2. Great, great tunes, amazing skill building stuff. And this song, I've got to say, it is kind of surprisingly to me uh, at first the most popular tune in this book by far people always ask me about this tune uh, loads of students want to learn it and in particular shout out to my monthly members Sally uh, Jenny and Rich who are all working on this one and like uh, want a bit more detail about it it's got some funny stuff in it it's got some repeats it's got some jazzy uh, phrasing and stuff in it obviously so here's a little talk through for you you, you got your count in one two one, two, three, four. Now our first little hits here are on the cymbal. The ones with a diamond for the note head is on the bell, as in like this. And the ones that are just crosses are on the main body of the cymbal. My cymbal actually is, funny enough, just broken and the cable, I've, I've ordered a new one just now, so they both sound like a bell at the minute. But the one that's a diamond is on the bell and the one that's on the main part of the cymbal is is just where it's across, right? So here's the first line. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three. Okay, first bar. One, and two, and three, and four. Remember here that we're swinging, right? This is swing music. So your quavers, your eighth notes, have a feel of one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And the and is that lazy, jazzy and one and two and three and four. And so first bar, one and two and three and four. And second bar is and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. So we've got an accent there on three and four. One and two and three and four. Third bar is the same as the first bar. One and two and three and four and. And the fourth bar, one and two and three and four. Stick on stick. So that means put your stick in the center of the snare drum and hit the stick with your other stick. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna play for you here the first line. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Three and four and two and three and four. One, two, three and four and two, three and four. Okay, and then the uh, verse comes in, the voice comes in, cigarette holder here. We're playing a classic swing groove. Goes like this. Oh, goes like this. Two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. And 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 one, Classic little bit of swing here. So the hi-hat is the main kind of event here. The bass drum is actually super light here. Obviously, I'm playing V drums here, and it's not quite the same thing. But on, a, on a, especially on, on the acoustic kit, you'd play really, really light here on the kick. The bass drum is very much a sort of supporting role here. And uh, the hi-hat is the main event here, I would say. So one, two, and three, four. And 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 of course, you got to make it swing, man. One, two, and three, four, and one. Two, and three, four, and one. It's all pretty soft here. So MP, mezzo piano, nice and soft. And that's what it is. One bar is one, two, and three, four, and. Often thought of by jazz as dog, walk the dog, walk the dog, walk the dog, walk the dog. Uh, that feel, man. So you play that for two whole lines, just keeping track as you go. I'll play all the way through from where it says cigarette holder. Second bar, two, three, four, third bar, fourth bar, fifth bar, sixth bar, seventh bar, one, two, three, four. The numbers in the brackets, by the way, or parentheses, uh, are sort of trying to be helpful. They're keeping track of the number of bars that you've played. It doesn't mean play five or play six. It's just keeping track. That's the fifth one. That's the sixth one of that section and so on. At the end, there's one little side stick. The cross there where the snare drum is is a side stick. 
So bar 12, one, two, and three, four, and. All right, and then we're on to the bit with the open hi-hat on one and three. Bar 13 goes like this. So same basic coordination as before. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. But you're going to open the hi-hat on the one and the three. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one. So that's open on one, close on two, open on three, close on four. And as you can hear, a little side stick. Three, four, and one on the four. Three, four, and one, two, and three. Still at MP here, so nice and light. And yeah, take your time with that open, close hi-hat, man. Ideally here, you wouldn't open the hi-hat very much. Just let it sizzle uh, just a little bit of the way. Just get that lovely, jazzy, sizzly sound. At grade two, I think that's quite a, a good coordination challenge. Age-old stuff, man. Take your time. Talk yourself through it if you need to at first. Open hi-hat and kick. Closed hi-hat as you hit it. Closed hi-hat hit on its own. Open hi-hat and kick. Closed hi-hat as you hit it and hit the snare. And then hi-hat on its own. Close. Talk yourself through it, man. Set the precedent in your nervous system. Grooves like this are where we get into the territory of where a student uh, can often say, oh, this is hard. I can't do this. I'm struggling with this. You're not struggling with it. You're at the beginning. Just program it in, man. Take your time. Uh, just go nice and steady and one note at a time. Don't rush. Remember, there's a lot of hours involved. There's a lot of hours expected here of drummers putting these tunes together. Uh, and a lot of those hours go into building these patterns up. If they're new for you at grade two, just take your time. And in the end, you're looking for... For, for every, for almost everybody at grade two, definitely for me when I was at grade two level, man, definitely for me, uh, playing along with the music straight away and trying to play that groove, no, man, it doesn't work like that. You've got to build it up, right? You've got to build it up nice and slow. Show your hands and your feet one thing at a time and you'll get that with uh, lots of repetition. So uh, last bar of the first page goes like this. So here we've got one and two and three and four. I'll play the last line of the first page. One, two, three, four. You getting that? So that's one, closed hi-hat and kick. You've then got the, the first tom-tom hit. These, these notes are all on the first tom-tom, the high-tom. The first tom-tom hit is on the and of beat two. The next one's on the and of beat three. The last one's on beat four and they're swung, remember? So one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. So swung, right? As opposed to straight. If it was straight, you'd go one and two and three and four. The ands are later. One and two and three and four. I'll play one time again. Last line, first page. One, two, three. Two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four. Okay, we then go over to the ride and we start to really swing here. This is yeah, what we'd call a four feel, as in the bass, uh, the upright bass, and the, the bass drum here will play four beats in the bar. Here's the first line of the second page. So like I say, a four feel, the bass drum plays four on the floor here. Now, first bar, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, ah. Uh. So one, two, three, four, ah, uh, or four and. That's written there just like it was on the first page, that swingy moment as a dotted quaver and then a semi-quaver. In jazz, that's basically interpreted as a, a, swung, a swung quavers or as a triplet. Uh, another way of thinking of this is a triplet but with the middle note missing out, as in one, two, three, four triplet. One, two, three, four triplet. What we often do in uh, sessions when we're learning this one is just loop these bars, right? So if you took that first bar and looped it, one, two, three, 
four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four. So bass drum is playing four on the floor. The hi hat's playing two and four here. And one of the things you can you can do if you like with your left foot or your hi hat foot is actually to play like a rolling technique here, where you go. Can you see my foot? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm quite a fan of doing that. So you basically play on the one and the three. Your heel comes down onto the back of the pedal, and your toes come up. And then on the two and the four, your toes come down and your heel comes up. Can you see this? Maybe you can. Yeah, there we go. So, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Not, not compulsory by any stretch, but I think that's a one nice way of getting a really good feel going here. So anyway, that's the first bar. Of the second page. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and second bar will go like this. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and third bar is a repeat of that. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and and the fourth bar goes like this. This is what we call a bit of comping here. Your left stick coming in on the snare, playing a little accompanying moment there just to kind of spice it up a bit. Fourth bar of the first line, second page. One, two, three, and four, and. One, two, three, and four, and. So I'm going to play here a few times around the first line of the second page. One, two, three, One time, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and third bar, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and. Okay, I'll carry on now and play the second line. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, one, two, three. All right, so swing feel continues there. Bar 25. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, one, two, three. Oh. So where it says switch a Rooney, you hit the snare drum and the kick on beat one. One, two, three. Beat four is a drag rudiment. So the actual loud note of the drag is the thing that happens on beat four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay. Now at that point you've got DS Alcoda. Uh, Dal Segno Alcoda from the sign until the coda. At this point, what you need to do is you need to go all the way back to the sign or the segno, the thing that looks like a funny dollar sign with a line through it at bar 13. So you go back to the groove that has the open hi-hat in it at this point. So switch a Rooney. One, two, three, four, and then two, three, four. You see what we did? We played those four bars, and now we're at the bit that says to coda. We now jump to the coda, which is the last two lines, right? Let me just recap on the form of the song one time. So you play the beginning, the intro on the cymbal. You then play uh, where it says voice, cigarette holder. You play that on the tight hi-hat. You then play bar 13 with the open hi-hat. It's a little solo break, not too loud. In other words, you play the first page exactly as is at the start. And then you play He's Nobody's Fool with your four feel. Then when you get to Switcheroonie, you do DS Alcoda. So at that point, after your drag on the snare drum there, beat four, you're going to jump all the way back to bar 13. Play those four bars again, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then you're going to jump to bar 29, you see in this, and play the whole of the last two lines, which I'll do for you now. 
So this is the coda now, the last two lines. Starting at 29, 3, 4. 1, 2, and 3, 4. 1, 2, and 3, 4. 2, and 3, 4. 1, 2, and 3, 4. I'll do that again. 1, 2, 3, 4. So same deal, isn't it, as at 13. Bass drum on one and three here, uh, rather than the four feel of one, two, three, four. And then the last line of all goes. You might do a little, you might do a little roll of some sort there at the end. Let's take the last line now, one and. So one and two and three and four and one and two, three, and four, and. Okay, so this is bar 33. One, and two, and three, and four, and. So you're playing one, and. Then you've got a crotchet rest, a quarter note rest, which is beat two. You've then got a quaver rest, or an eighth note rest, which is beat three. Then you're playing three quavers, three eighth notes, and four, and, which remember are swung. So bar 33. Three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and three and four and now the second to last bar thirty four one and two and three and four and four. so one and quavers eighth notes beat two is a rest a crotchet rest one beat rest you're then going to play three on the snare drum, four and two quavers, four and with a pushed crash cymbal on the and there. So a couple of times here, here's bar 34, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And. Okay, I'm going to play real slow the whole of the last line. One and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Over the last note there, well, it's it's tied, isn't it, to the first beat of the next bar, suggesting it just ring out there. And the little dot with the arcing line over the top is a fermata. Uh, that means a hold or a pause. In this case, a hold. So you might play a little, a nice little embellished little roll there on the cymbal at the end. Something tasteful, needless to say, at the end there. Okay, a uh, couple of times here. Last line, whole thing. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And again, one, two, three, four. And one time, here we go. Okay, and last of all, I'm going to go from 29 now, the coda, to the end. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Hope that all makes a bit of sense. It's a really lovely thing, man. You've got to make it swing. You've got to take those grooves. One at a time for a grade two drummer. Man, I just think back to me starting grade two. I would have been all over the place here. Just um, uh, take your time, build them up separately. Uh, there's no reasonable way, in my experience and opinion, that a grade two drummer would just put this on and play accurately straight away, especially with the open hi-hat bit. No chance, man. Uh, just take your time, build it up bit by bit. That's completely cool. That's half the fun of it. And it's expected to take a lot of hours, man, to put this one together if you are just starting off on grade two. So that's cool. Uh, just enjoy it, man. It's a really lovely one. Remember the form. You play the whole first page. You play the first two lines of the second page. You then play bar 13 to 16 for a second time. You then jump to the coda and you play 29 
to the end. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, obviously, I've got a video demo of this one where I played through it as well. I'll link to that and uh, hopefully that'll be useful. Thanks a million for watching and for the suggestions of that one. And um, yeah, it's been really interesting doing this with people. I'm not surprised, but it's kind of noticeable how popular this song has been. And I had no idea when I first saw this book that how popular this song uh, would be with a certain um, learner. So it's super cool. And uh, yeah, perhaps a little bit different from some of the things you see on this channel a lot. So um, yeah, really nice, really nice little one to get into. Thanks for watching. As always, really appreciate it. Please like, share and subscribe. If you do subscribe and you get you want to get a notification every time I upload a video, which is pretty much every day, please click the little bell icon. And thanks to all the amazing people as ever who've supported this channel via my Buy Me A Coffee support page. If you found these videos uh, useful, helpful, entertaining in any way, uh, and you're in a position to, please consider supporting this channel. You can do that in two ways, both of which are via my Buy Me A Coffee support page, which is linked uh, below in the, in the video description. Uh, you can buy me a coffee so to speak thanks a million to all the amazing people who've done that and uh, alternatively you could become a monthly member like good old jenny and rich and um sally who've requested this this tune here uh, for 10 pounds a month you'll be supporting the channel helping it grow and i hugely appreciate that's facilitating me making more and more videos and answering more and more of your queries and uh, as time goes on being hopefully more and more helpful for you guys watching this uh, and supplying the things that you need to see that would help you with your drumming you also get a ton of stuff in return you get a customized practice plan uh, which i'll write for you based on exactly where you're at and where you want to go a complimentary zoom session where we can check in and go through that for you members videos priority requests over videos on the channel like uh, like this is a good example on this one right here uh, and a ton of other stuff as well um discount on future zoom lessons and face-to-face -face lessons and all sorts of stuff like that so feel free to check that out if that's of interest thanks a million great suggestion of that tune have fun with satin doll and see you soon cheers